They should change the perception or the way they look at us because we are all the same like, you know, everyone else. It's not like because you are black, you are a thief or you can, you do all the bad things. No, 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 it's not like that. We are people just like anyone else. But, you know, being black is not so easy. It's very, very hard. My name is Nelo Mulefe. Uh, I come from Botswana. Sometimes you, uh, it's, it's not good because you just get into the train, you, you sit and no one will come sit next to you. So you start uh, to think like, what's wrong with me? Uh, am I, do I stink or, you know? Maybe I'm not, you know, somehow I'm not well, somewhere, I don't know. Yes, yeah, it's a bit, you know, not good, man. Yeah. Sometimes you just walk, you're on your way, people start locking their cars, the car doors, they close up their windows. I don't know what for, but it's not good. Why have so many Africans found it hard moving to Australia? Are we a racist country? What are the major issues facing young Africans upon moving here? Well, we've got, uh, especially in central Melbourne and in some suburbs like Footscray, a large population of African Australians. Um, many of them are born and bred here in Australia. Many of them have come here uh, from, uh, as refugees. Uh, in, although there's many, many success stories of people who've gone on to run successful businesses or start successful jobs, is that um, there's also uh, probably a much larger proportion of this group than we would like uh, who are finding themselves without work, uh, finding themselves going through and doing study here in Australia, still finding it then tough to get uh, a meaningful job and that's having flow on effects. There's a lot of people who have studied here, have gone to RMIT or Victoria University and who tell me that they apply for jobs and send off uh, applications and resumes and then um, they don't get any interviews and um, the saddest stories come from people who say they change their name um, to something that sounds more Anglo uh, and all of a sudden they get a phone call back and get invited over for an interview or find the job. Journalist Clyde Salamu has heard similar stories about the lack of opportunities for Africans in Australia. We've, I've seen, I've met and I've discussed, uh, I've had a, a lot of discussions with people who have qualification, they've studied in Australia, uh, have uh, degrees and diplomas in Australia but having difficulty uh, finding jobs. There are people who've come from overseas with the overseas qualification. These, these qualifications are not being recognised. Also we're finding from um, kids who are looking at their parents who might have worked and studied hard either in another country or here not being able to find a meaningful job and who are saying well why should I bother studying? Why should I bother working hard? You've done it and you haven't found yourself in a meaningful job. How can we help these disengaged youth? Victoria University lecturer Godefer Gur thinks that the targeting of services plays a large part. A lot of the services that you see seems to target the people who are already on the system because they are easy to access. But there are disengaged people who have no connection whatsoever have no knowledge about the services. You got a lot of school programs, you know, you got a lot of um, programs around universities and high schools. But I think the target should be those people out of those. Those people have completely disengaged. So there should be some method and some methodology or mechanism how those disengaged communities or members can tap into the existing services. Young Africans are creating events to help inspire disengaged youth and talk about the issues that are important to them. But see, we sympathize for our loved ones, we sympathize for the people we know for some reason, we just don't for the strangers or the people that hurt us. See, we gotta find a way to communicate. 
Enough of the conflict, time to cooperate. Peace, not violence. Love, not hate. Us, and not me. And our future will be bright as can be. How do, we, how do we play the role of not being the bystanders, but being the encouragers, even if we don't have much to offer? We wait for big cooperation companies to put on festivals to bring us together. And it's like, well, we, 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 we are allowing the media to control our lives, to control our talents. The mainstream media's treatment of African Australians is an important issue affecting this community. Um, I'm pretty sure some people here might be aware of the two articles that came out on The Age, one which was titled um, African Crime Concern and the other How the West Was Lost. And I think it was interesting because it sounded like, wow, who, who was fighting what war until <laughs> when did you lose the West? They, and they, they, they have these findings that, that come out. And, and it's like, well, if they can have, they, if the media can have, can have its own say, what about us as a community? Why does it take us so long to actually come out and, and, and brush these claims aside? If you hear any news about African youth or African migrants, it has to be negative. Uh, a leaked set of uh, crime statistics from the Victorian police that found their way onto the front page of the age, suggesting offending rates were higher. Uh, amongst a particular group of people. Now, um, the problem with just reporting that in isolation is that unless you're prepared to also look at the employment statistics, uh, also look at whether people are being stopped and searched more often, um, and actually paint a whole picture about what's going on, then uh, it's easy to be selective and it's easy to demonise a group of people. The media has a lot of power, uh, pretty much in, in every society um, and uh, what is described in the media affects how people think and how they relate to each other. To change people's perceptions, Clyde Salamu created Africa Media Australia. Africa Media Australia is a project that I've initiated uh, to try to provide African communities with a platform uh, where they can basically showcase a more positive image of their communities uh, all the beautiful things that are happening in, in their lives and in the communities. One such meaningful event in the African community was the launch of the African Australian Community Centre. I think uh, this is actually the best model that really uh, was lacking, that the centre for Africans, run by Africans, to support the Africans. So, uh, a line of, um, of program and, and, and services that are, are going to be available for the, for the people. We would run uh, youth programs. We also would run um, support services for a large families, in addition to settlement support and, and counseling services. All these are happening in this building. The police have also been involved in other initiatives to help the African community. The police take us to play in the basketball and cricket, tennis, football, because I want to make kids happy. What else can we do to help the African community in Australia? Well, there are a number of things that need to be done. First and foremost, uh, the society needs to realise that when Africans come to Australia, they should start to look at them as part and parcel of this society rather than just some foreigners coming to live in Australia. And I think we need a proper uh, wraparound service for people who've come here, who we've taken in. I think we've got to say, well, what, what is it that people need in order to get into jobs, in order to start their own businesses, provide them with that support. And once we do that, I think then we'll find that this will be very much a set of communities that will stand on their own two feet. Although there are challenges ahead, the way things are moving, the next generation of Africans will have plenty of reasons to smile. If, um, if you could tell something, everyone in Australia something, what would you tell them? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> you wouldn't say anything? I would say good morning or good, morning. good afternoon. And so if you're listening to this, then you know I exist and I'm trying to change the world because the youth need this. That all model they can look up to. I'm not one, I'm saying so you can become.
The world is ours. We can change it at any time. In fact, any day you leave is a day when you can make change coming. 